helping others develop technology. We started it just at the beginning of the dot-com crash. Um, so we initially helped companies develop e-commerce technologies, um, and then we got very much into developing technology to combat uh, fraud in the areas of, of plastic card fraud and optical disc fraud. And about three years ago, we made this discovery, um, this free energy discovery. Well, I mean, we didn't set out to do it, because quite simply, any sane engineer or you know, any rational person doesn't set out to, to achieve something that is absolutely impossible, and this is absolutely impossible. Um, we were actually looking at ways of powering CCTV cameras um, to monitor ATMs, and the project literally fell out of that. What, what, what we found is that when you construct certain magnetic fields using permanent magnets, the kind of magnets you have in your fridge, um, that certain constructions of, of, of these magnets cause certain fields. When you travel around the field, stopping and starting at the same position, you, you, you gain energy. Um, that's the first part of it. And, and the second part is that energy doesn't come from anywhere. It doesn't come from the magnet, and it doesn't come from um, ambient uh, temperature. Um, when you sum those together, you have something that is a direct violation of the principle of the conservation of energy. Um, so it, it's a huge heresy in, in scientific terms. And, and that's the scientific side of it. Um, what does it mean in terms of capability? It literally means that you know, if this is ever deployed into a car engine, it literally means from the day you purchase your car till the day you dispose of it, you never put any, any, any form of fuel into it. Um, but it's a huge claim. And what we focus on as a business is, is the first thing to say that, look, because this is such a, a blasphemy, such a heresy, that we must engage with the world of science. We must try and find a way to get science to actually just look at it. And we've struggled for three years to have that happen. So we were left with only one option, which is to get them angry, which was to actually effectively slap science in the face publicly um, and to get them involved in testing it. And, and that's been very successful for us. Um, since we issued this challenge, we've had over 4,000 people apply to test the technology. In three years, up to this slap in the face of science, um, we've approached you know, maybe 100 universities and, and eight have been prepared to come and look. It is um, amazing how fundamentalist sciences about this. I mean, we have had, you know, um, an absolutely vitriolic reaction. I mean, it is incredible the depth of feeling that, that this one subject in the world of science causes. I mean, and the reaction has been overwhelmingly negative. Um, and in some cases, um, quite hostile. We have had um, certain people involved in the project phoned up by a physicist who told this person to watch their back. Um, you know, we've had bloggers turn up to the office. I've had one blogger turn up in my home. Um, it is amazing the depth of, of, of feeling. And it, it, this is fundamentalism from, from a scientific point of view. This is literally the reaction to our claim here is a religious reaction. It's the only way that I, that I, that I can put it in, in, in a way that people will understand. Physically, it, it, it ultimately comes down to a construction of magnets. Um, and, and there is um, a fixed set of magnets that, that the fields create. And then there are certain paths mechanical paths around that that, that that you travel that cause this effect to happen. So physically you, you could view it as, as almost like an electric motor in some terms. The mechanical paths are not simple paths, they're not um, necessarily circular paths, they involve multiple movements. Um, but what causes the, the, the movement are, are the interaction of these magnetic fields we build and other magnets. Um, and that causes that when you travel around these paths, this gain of energy, and this very unexpected gain of energy. We've developed and invested a huge amount of time and money into test systems that allow us to create three-dimensional energy maps of certain configurations. And, and the test system um, that you see here is one of several test systems that will literally, we can put a, um, a set of magnets into it and build a physical energy map of the field. And that then allows us to, to describe routes through it that are, are more optimum. So it's our most effective tool in terms of understanding what's going on, because there's no theoretical basis for this. This shouldn't happen, and therefore the only way you can really explore it is experimentally. I mean, it's important to understand that we're not placing any limits on the jury. Um, the only limit that we're placing on the jury is that they must publish their results at the end. So we'll be presenting to them our research over the last three years, research done by others, um, various implementations of the technology, and basically then we'll be saying, okay, you guys decide how you want to test it, where you want to test it, um, and how long you want to test it for. It has to be a process that they define. Um, we're going to fund the whole thing. Um, and really, we can't say how, where, when this is going to happen. It's up to these people to do that themselves. So we can't take limits on it. 
So said there's only one caveat for that. At the end, whatever the results are, they must be published. Well, uh, uh, it's important to understand that we view this as a tipping point. Um, uh, credible verification of, of a claim like this, and there have been hundreds of claims like this um, throughout history, um, will create a, a totally new energy industry. Um, and we consider ourselves to be at the forefront of that, and there will be other bigger players that come into it. it you cannot disassociate um, advancements in civilization from new ways of harnessing energy. So it is as fundamental to people in the world as it is to science, and that's why we have risked everything in, in this challenge. Um, from our point of view, we don't see it as a risk because we know what the answer will be at the end, um, but we risk the ridicule and, and you know, any physicist that you interview would immediately um, debunk it. Um, so we know that we're in for, you know, a six to 12 month period here of absolute ridicule. But the rewards, not just for this company, but for everybody, are too great not to take that. We understood when we did this that there would be several accusations, and, and the first one is fraud. Um, you know, we're, we're somehow leveraging this, this, this PR response um, to, to commit fraud. And what we said is from the day we issued the advert until the day the results are, are coming in, we will not commercialize it anyway. We will not, you know, sell shares in the company. We've had hundreds of offers. Um, we will not license the technology. We will make absolutely no effort to commercialize the technology. And that's simply a statement to say, this isn't about us making fraud off, off a claim. Um, hopes, what can we say? I mean, we're, we're not risking our reputations and the company's existence on something that we don't fundamentally believe in.